And joining me in studio to move this conversation forward is Petroleum and Mining Cabinet Secretary, Honorable John Munez. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Thank you for finding thank time you. to be here with us this Good. morning. Thank I know you. you just got back from yeah. Lodwa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the transportation of oil from uh, Lokicha to, to, to Mombasa should resume tomorrow, and obviously this is good news. Uh, let me first understand from you the meeting that was held on Thursday. What was discussed and what was agreed in that particular meeting for us to now understand how things will work moving forward, uh, CS? Uh, thank you very much for having me, and uh, let me start by saying uh, I want to report we are not going to resume tomorrow. Uh, contrary to what has been widely reported. Was, uh, widely reported. Okay. A good gesture from the leadership, from the community. Uh, after shutting down uh, the operations, uh, we agreed we should actually restart them again, which is a good idea. But we need to organize our, organize our logistics, get back the staff, Talo staff have moved up to the country. The last I understand week. some of them are in uh, Dubai. Some have gone abroad. Since, since the since standoff? The, since the shutdown. Okay. Uh, so we need to reorganize that and get them back. Uh, we need to start up the, the tanks, warm them up again. Mm -hmm. uh, so to move them down there and to organize the meetings with the, uh, the oil partners here will take some time. I think by Monday next week, I think we should be started again. By Monday next week, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully we start and the, again. And the staff that had left have given up, they are, they're on their way back. They're on their way back. Okay. Yeah. We have a meeting today to discuss with Talo and the, and the partners. Okay. Uh, tell, tell, me, tell me a little bit about the meeting that was held on Thursday. First of all, who, who was in that meeting? Uh, the meeting was uh, a meeting of Interior, the State Department of Petroleum, uh, which was myself and my team. Uh, Interior was uh, the regional uh, team security committee. Uh, the regional commissioner and his team, uh, the county staff uh, led by the governor, mm -hmm. uh, the National Assembly, of course, the MPs, the MCS, everybody came. Okay. And then we also invited uh, some professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, in that meeting, we discussed on how to open, to restart again the operation. Uh, they raised issues, uh, issues on security and security. Uh, they challenged me on uh, issues of local content that they needed more jobs, they need more tenders, uh, that uh, on security we are actually not uh, supporting Trukana to cut wrestling uh, that is affecting uh, uh, the host communities around the, the wells. Mm -hmm. So in that meeting we had a longer discussion on how to resolve it. Okay. Uh, people you? understand it's important uh, to benefit from, from this resource. So at the end of it, we all agreed, yes, let's start it again. And then we challenged the interior to deploy. We have deployed. Uh, I think GSU. last week, Tuesday, you, you told uh, at a different interview, uh, you deployed, what, 600 security? Oh, 600 security with the Is vehicles. that sufficient for, a, for, for even a constituency, let alone a county? You know, there's nothing sufficient as far as cattle wrestling is concerned. And that's why I'm trying to, I'm not an expert in, uh, in matters of security. Mm -hmm. But I've always said, Let's apply new technologies. We need to bring some bit of ICT in these matters. We need to identify these cattle wrestlers where they are. There is a use of drones. We can know where they are raiding us mm -hmm. and which direction they are taking. We should actually get punitive measures on, on counties that are actually practicing this. If a county is stealing from another county, number X, and quantify that into millions, I want the assembly, the, the national assembly, to come with some laws that will stop people from doing that, discourage it. And one way is actually to actually uh, compensate those counties. That have lost If Turkana is stealing from West Pokot, we should get the, the quantum there, that this is what you've taken from us. And that X should be taken away from, uh, from Turkana okay. uh, well, well, to compensate. Well and that, that will stop it. It will discourage that county. Good measures, but definitely more long-term than short-term. Yes. What were sort of the short-term agreements that you then came out of with on Thursday? Deployment. Digit? We deployed. Okay, so de more deploy. deployment. Do you have yeah, any numbers? Let's deploy. Let's organize our crowds so that they're protected. We told them to come themselves. Stay in groups. You cannot stay alone and you'll be attacked there and you blame government. Mm -hmm. Stay in groups of hundreds, uh, 200 crowds together 
And that way, the, it's easier for government to actually uh, provide se security to a larger group and pursue. And then uh, the national police reserve is there. If they are together, it's easier for them to pursue the, the criminals. So we, we had long discussions mm -hmm. that will help curb the problem. You, you must have spoken about jobs for the people. And I spoke to a leader from Turkana who asked me not to you know, mention his name. He complained that apart from you, there are very few, I guess, I don't know if the word to use is indigenous people from Turkana who actually work within the mining and petroleum sector from a leadership, public leadership perspective. He's calling for affirmative action, you know, for the people of Turkana. Did that, did that come up? Were there any resolutions you, or promises you know, where, given? While I, while I appreciate this thing of jobs that uh, every leader should ensure that the communities are given jobs, uh, you can't get into a ministry and start employing your own people. That there are no, f we don't have enough Turkanas in the in the State Department of Petroleum. But at the same time, I just got in four years, four years, uh, four months ago. I can't get there and start employing. It's a work of public service, and people have to, you know, apply for those jobs. Is that what you're being told? Employ employ people directly. Yes, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I can't do that. But what I can do is to, to create jobs like liaison officers. We've been employing seven liaison officers. Mm to coordinate activities uh, in the in the Talo areas. Those are jobs. I want to create an office in Lodu, a regional office, because we know this is very important, and it's, and it's happening in Trukana. Let's create a regional office to coordinate these issues, so that the grievances coming out there, we put them on the table, there are teams there to sort them out. We need a structure in Trukana that will create jobs. We want to get to, the, to Talo, for them to give us their plans their procurement plans, their human resource structures, so that we identify how many jobs are there for Kenyans. These are things so you that, So that to kind of portion, mm. which should be an affirmative action, assume there are 100 jobs, that the bulk of the jobs should go to Turkana. What you're asking for from Talo was not part of the agreement that you signed with them as government? Yes, we signed with them that they would because provide I would all that. Because those are already part of but the those agreement. those are specific areas. That's, and that's why I also, in that meeting, suggested that we will have uh, a conference mm -hmm. uh, drawing uh, the companies, uh, the exp our experts, our professionals, our leadership, so that Talo delivers their plan of action. What is there in jobs? What is their intenders? How are they going to, uh, to do their development? Because we are now under the, the early oil uh, piloting scheme, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we're going to, to mega areas, the pipeline, the second phase of this is going to pipeline. So far, the government has spent, uh, through Talo, two billion US dollars. The amount in phase one is costing uh, the companies and government two billion US dollars. That's two, 200 Over billion. Over 200 billion Kenya shillings. 200 billion Kenya shillings. We are now about to negotiate for 300 billion Kenya shillings. I want to tell my people in Turkana to relax. There are jobs coming. 300 billion will be spent mm -hmm. on this project. W w why it is it's big mm -hmm. time. Why expectations not well set by government? That is, is that where, why we find that ourselves? That is where we got it wrong. We have raised high expectations in Turkana. The public there expect that we're selling uh, oil and they're getting their 5% tomorrow. Their 20% is coming to the county. They will be rich tomorrow. Let's talk about this that. This thing that you saw <laughs> there. <laughs> should be just seen as a smaller benefit. The larger benefits, which is now the amounts of money, the revenues that will come to Turkana, will come after we've sold the oil. Tell me about the 5% to Turkana. And, and I know you've been asked this before, and I've seen you, you know, answering that question before. They are saying they want money for school fees. Uh, they want money to you know, keep their families, family upkeep. They want money for development. They want money in their bank accounts. How did you tackle this in that Thursday meeting? Well, in that meeting, we, we discussed uh, the, that matter at length and we agreed it's a matter we should uh, shelf a bit until it is dis discussed uh, in the assembly and in parliament. Mm -hmm. Because that 5% will be de determined by the leadership in the house, in parliament. People will discuss that. So it has been politicized. The, the half the team in Trukana were saying, let's give this money to people's pockets. 
Half the group is we, saying through no. Through what bank tra transfers to yes, everyone's uh, accounts? Uh, uh, like uh, hunger, hunger and safety net uh, program that is putting money in people's uh, cards mm -hmm. uh, so that you just go to an ATM and get your 5%. Five, five uh, uh, that I don't want to delve into because it's a matter that will be dealt with uh, at Parliament. But at, you don't, do you have your recommendation? What would you recommend? Uh, I should not recommend now because it's Parliament. Okay. But <laughs> I want something good that is going to help the Turkana for a longer period. We cannot misuse the money we get. Whether it was going to people's pockets or what, uh, the bottom line is the, pro the president has pronounced on it that uh, let's develop Turkana with oil money. Okay. Let's not misuse this money. If the protests start again, will you be surprised? I'll be very surprised if we don't follow the approach we are now doing. So you believe the if approach, you follow that approach? The approach that is uh, being taken now but the Minister of Interior and the State Department is we are drawing an MOU, a return to work formula. Mm -hmm. That is what government is now doing. We want even to take it, uh, uh, we want to take longer even. It, 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 we could even push this to two weeks. So you the, might the not tracking. even start next week, Monday. You might what is important is we want to get uh, uh, a return to work formula that shows how to engage. We want a structure, a structured approach that will ensure next time it happens, you are bringing your grievances on the table. Next time it, it happens, are you expecting it's, it's, it to happen? If it happens. If it happens. If okay. it happens. Just, just checking. It is very expensive, actually, to, to, to shut down. Shut down is very expensive. It's costing us a, mil a million dollars now. So far? So far, we've, we've been spending... Over a week? Over a week, a hundred million Kenyan shillings. Has been, been lost. lost. Has been lost. That's not a penny. Who's going to bear that cost? The taxpayer? Taxpayers. M me and, uh, and the viewer? And I want to challenge the Turkana people. For God's sake, it's a pity this happened. We are losing money that will actually be, actually be deducted from uh, our revenues. The companies will be happy. Mm -hmm. of, course, of course, they are not happy, but uh, they will not lose at the end of the day. They will recoup this money from Kenya. And by you standing there to stop this oil, and still expecting government mm -hmm. to provide for the development in Turkana in all these areas. It is not right. Let's bring our grievances on the table. Okay. The president allowed us entry into state house to discuss those issues. Where we had expected our people to come back and say, look, let's raise them with the president again. If the, if the cabinet secretary cannot handle them, but not to disrespect a process the goodwill from the government in, in, that is going in your view as yes what changed from the day when president huru kenyatta launched the project and when the protest started were leaders had had leaders not been adequately consulted had the people not had enough time for public participation we all saw the pictures from turkana we saw the the jubilation we saw the keen interest with which residents followed the proceedings there what changed what changed was uh, the turkana public is saying the president pronounced himself on security okay. and said anybody attacking another person should be dealt with. And immediately that happened. Insecurity, Insecurity from uh, its ugly uh, West Pocot against Trukana started. So people are saying, why did they disrespect the president? Maybe to get attention from the same president who said that, Let's, let's stop this so that it comes. Allah, that, that should not have happened. We should have actually brought those issues on the table. I must say this without contradicting uh, anybody. Uh, cattle wrestling is something we need. It's a national issue that should be addressed. It's happening in all these counties. It might have increased in Turkana, but it's happening in the northern rift, in areas of eastern province, in Marsabit, I know it's happening now. In Iselo, there are issues there with Kana, Samburu, and the Boran. Okay. And w we need not to tie it with the, with, with the EOPS. This, this should not have been tied together. Okay. It was wrong for them to have done that. I want to ask you two more questions before we switch gears, because it's not just Turkana oil that you mm. deal with, and, yes. and you have a wider mandate than that. Yes. Transparency in the whole process of oil production is a concern. For example, you talked about an MOU with the leaders last week, Thursday. Yes. Will Kenyans get to see that MOU? Will Turkana people 
get to see that MOU. They, they will see that MOU. They will see that MOU. They will, because I have a copy of the last one uh, that was signed when, when we, we did the shutdown. Okay. We did the shutdown uh, and we had an MOU first of uh, 4th of uh, November 2013. Okay. That was the first MOU. Yes. That was signed uh, by the State Department of uh, Petroleum uh, and the community and Talo. We expect this one also to come again. Tomorrow we want to get another MOU. On top of that, we want transparency in this nature. Uh, we are undertaking an audit of, uh, of Talo. We want to audit what Talo is doing in Trukana. Because what? it is money. We are mm -hmm. going to pay them. They are going to recoup from uh, the oil proceeds. Don't they do reports? And they will do reports, but we need an auditor to tell us, are they overcharging us? Are they doing this? Are we doing the right way? Mm -hmm. Is it expensive? Is it 100 million they're talking about really that has been lost? Because it's a we'll, figure they've given you. We'll undertake an audit. How soon? It's going on now. The process of uh, undertaking that audit uh, has, been, has started. Mm -hmm. and my peers is very keen on that. Uh, and uh, it was raised by government uh, that uh, yes, they've done a good job. We want to undertake an audit. It's, it's taxpayers money. Okay. Mm. CS, hang on there a minute. We, we need to take a quick break. You're watching Citizen Extra? Okay. Oh, okay. Not yet. All right, then. Uh, then we, then we, we carry on. I, I beg your pardon for that. Uh, so, let, so that's one, and I think that's important. I also to want to, I wanted to, show, to, to tell, uh, the, uh, to, to explain to the country what the effects of uh, what has happened. There has been shut down on, on the wells. And when we restart, we need to warm up the, the tanks restart the wells it's mm -hmm. a process there's been a slowdown on the outreach uh, activities for the public uh, we'll sub provide water for the people of Trukana around there they're not getting that now uh, the consult uh, con consultations on the EMOPS EOPS uh, program uh, that started very well it's a pity that it, uh, it was shut down uh, it will be delayed if you don't finish this Local jobs, the marshals, all those people working there, it's a pity they are not getting employment now. So, so then I'm, going, I'm going with a lot of speed to ensure we correct this. Uh, what, what, what concerns me, CS, then, was what was in the original deal signed, for example, with Talo? And, and they're not here, you know, sort of to give the right of reply, but if we knew what was on that deal, CS, then maybe we would understand what had been agreed versus what is available the main, now. The main thing on the deal was the local content would be respected. We'll ensure we do our corporate social responsibility. We'll ensure if there are grievances like this, we bring them on the table. That we should not go stopping uh, trucks. We should not jump over fences to frighten the foreigners. I mean, you know, you show the gun to somebody who has not seen a gun, they, they run away. And now it is taking us uh, so much to, to, to convince them to come back. And there are issues of insurance. They are now saying that they need to increase, mm -hmm. to raise the insurance level so that the companies now uh, support them more in case something happens. So it's becoming comp a complex. You know, something you do thinking is just a small thing you'll shut and mm -hmm. we'll start tomorrow mm -hmm. can grow into okay. a mountain. But, but at this moment, you can't give us specifics. You said that, for example, in the area of local content, there was a deal between government and Talo that you will provide we, opportunities. Yes. Was, was there specifics on jobs? How many jobs? Where, so that when the people complain that we don't have enough work, they are complaining based on something they read and then understood as, as this. Uh, the document was not comprehensive. I don't think it showed the percentages, like 70% uh, of the jobs should go to the locals okay. and all that. But now we now want to review that. Tala has accepted. And, uh, and our department has also accepted. We come together with the Trukana leadership. We sit down and review. The problem in Trukana is this, and that's my people. Mm -hmm. If you promise them something and you don't deliver it, it's a problem. They can't even cut your head. But if you said, I have this glass of water, I don't have more, they will appreciate you for what you have said. So sometimes I've told companies, don't promise if you don't, if you don't have. They will appreciate you for what you have. If you said there are only 100 jobs, just say we have 100 jobs. But to be fair, yes, I also blame the government. <laughs> yes. I, I also say that, it's, uh, in, in my view, it would have been a partnership that government would also have pushed Talo to, to make the declaration sort of very public. But I, I understand Community what you engagement saying. has been very low. We need to more sensitization. Public we participation. Public participation. The civil society platform should be very active. Mm -hmm. uh, kept up 
I've told them yesterday, provide enough resources so that we sensitize the Turkana public. Lose those local NGOs. So talk to people mm -hmm. so that we're realistic in what we're saying. And, the, and all these things that you're talking about. It is my, it is my ministry. You're going to change we, them. I mean, we have to do it. We take the blame also. We should do more. We should do more to sensitize our people. Okay. For the, for the crude oil that's been tracked from uh, Lokicha to uh, Mombasa, how much oil per truck, for example, what's the value of the oil in each truck? Help us understand some of these figures. Uh, th these are minimal, really. These are minimal. These are uh, 10,000 liters uh, mm -hmm. being shipped. We, we expect uh, to do 2,000 barrels per day, uh, if you just want to understand it like that. Uh, in the EOPS, we uh, ex uh, estimate 2,000 barrels per day. And by the time we hit a quantity of a ship, which is 400,000 uh, barrels, uh, you can see that could be about three months. About three months. Yes. So and that's fa phase one. Do you have, do you have there's, already, there's already existing uh, mm, uh, quantities in Gamia 1, in our tanks, uh, and Amosin. The first phase is to clear that. Mm -hmm. The second phase is now to, uh, you know, the, to generate from the wells at 2,000 barrels per day uh, for the EOPS 2, so that we now, by that time, will have actually hit uh, time for the crude oil pipeline. We should now go to 60,000 barrels to 80,000 barrels per day. And okay. then that is what we can now call commercial. Have we, have we locked down buyers? Because I know there were a few trips that were done a couple of months ago, to, I think, to China, to India, to, in a sense, look for someone who we are guaranteed will, will sort of pick this up. Have we gotten that locked down? You, you know, the EOP, uh, operation is a, is a research operation. Mm -hmm. operation. And the tracking the, the thing we're taking now is research. We're taking, we want to test the market. We want to test our logistics. Mm -hmm. So we're taking this to look around and look and market. So you the don't have any sort Ken of definite Kenyan destinations product. right yeah. now? The Kenyan product is being marketed. Mm. It is a waxy, sticky, uh, nice crude oil. Mm. Uh, so we want to market it. Uh, so where, where are they? Okay, maybe then where are the interests coming from? The interest will be China uh -huh. and the US. Mm. China and the US? Yes. Okay. And yeah. the so we were waiting for people to tell us, yes, we, we want this. Then uh, we hit the 60,000, 80,000 barrels through a pipeline. And then we start, and then we now expand, mm. uh, you know, exploration uh, on hydrocarbons to, to include other counties. Uh, we see something in, uh, okay. in, in Lamu, we see you Northern know, Sun coming, El Gay Maraquet is, is promising also. Uh, we want to see how we can put all that. We can do if that. I if there are enough quantities, don't even talk of a refinery until we have done all that. Because the quantities must be enough. Must be enough. Mm. Before, oh, when I, before I, I switch gears, when I posted this on social media, one of the questions that Kenyans were, was, were asking me was, when will I be able to fuel my car with Turkana, processed Turkana oil, or oil that originated from Turkana? Uh, they're looking for timelines, and I guess this is something that Kenyans would be excited about, that you can drive down in a vehicle that is fueled by a product after that is straight from home. Do you have any? After it's in process, it's the same oil. So it's the same. It doesn't. No, you, don't have, you don't have to look for it. Is it, is it 2021, <laughs> sort of when the commercial? 2022. 2022. Yeah, through ourselves, you still fuel your car. You still fuel your car. Yes, anyway. Anyway, there are these talks of a modular refinery in Trukana. Uh, we're still looking into that. Okay. A smaller one. Uh, to run, to run the, the operations and maybe sell a bit. Uh, maybe that. Uh, but uh, let's keep our fingers crossed and wait. Uh, for that. Okay. Uh, yes. Th thank you for clarifying that. I, I actually want to get your thoughts on the Mwana Inchi gas project. And that's one that you actually also spoke about when you were being vetted in, in February. Yes. And you called for, you know, the spreading the use of LPG across the country, leaving behind firewood mm. and, and, and the traditional ways of in which people cook food, etc. When will the project begin sort of in the 47 counties? I know there was some sort of pilot phase and I, at some point, I think in May, it had been put on hold because of various issues. Just kind of give us a status update we on this. We are running with time to see how we can do it, roll it out to the counties uh, this financial year. This we, financial year. We put in two billion uh, shillings for that. The national oil is, uh, is going to be a key uh, distributor. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a game changer. This is what the president really wants. You can't put the last mile and still... Uh, continue burning charcoal, charcoal and firewood in your house, we need to modernize. Number two, we need to actually cut down on adulteration of, of our products. 
as we speak, some countries are even questioning our products. But if you actually went this route and raised kerosene, because mm -hmm. you'd be no use to have kerosene if you have enough supply of uh, monoenergy gas. Okay. That, that would really be a game changer for us. What sort of phase are we in? I think there were two counties that have been identified for a sort of pilot phase, and then it was supposed to be rolled out to the 47 counties. Where are we? It's the first phase. We're still in the, first, still phase. In the first phase. How many counties or households are you targeting? We'll do about six, and then soon we roll it out to the 47 counties. By, uh, by the end of the financial? By the end of the financial year. Okay. But uh, the challenges, we want to look at the, the cylinders, ensure the self. Safety of cylinders is, is very important. Okay. If you buy from some local uh, agent and it's blown up in a, in a village and kills so many people, that's a big problem for Kenya. So we, we're going to be very careful. We want to develop the capacity in the, the National Oil Corporation. As you know, this is the pride of Kenya in matters of petroleum. We need to develop our own national corporation to be dealing with all these issues. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, in, in the issue of, you know, sort of when, once you get it out there, I think in the, in the Business Daily or in the Daily Nation in, in early May, there was a report of um, faulty cylinders and that it ha this had caused your ministry to actually, talk, in, a, in a sense, take a step back and ensure that all is well in regards to that. How far are we with that now? And you've actually kind of mentioned that the cylinders have to be safe. Have we instructed the ministry through the peers and, uh, and, uh, and, and the national oil uh, to look into the quality aspects of the cylinders? That's where to start. Mm -hmm. Let's ensure we get the right cylinders have the specifications and safety. Okay. The moment we do that, then we roll out the program. So the ones that had sort of been first procured? There are some questionable ones. Do you have yesterday, any numbers? How many are questionable of, of the first lot that were ordered? I can't give you the figure now, but I think a good number of what has been delivered was actually questionable. 50%, 30%? 30%. 30%. 30%. 30%. So are you looking for a new supplier? We will actually consider, I mean, if you're if you supplying wrong things, you can also be given a chance to improve on them and get the right thing done. Uh, we, we don't want to kill business, but to ensure people do the right thing. Okay, okay. It's safety. Uh, you kill people. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the plan, obviously, to also have uh, cylinders that have some sort of technology, in a sense, lock them or limit them to households. That's something that I, I had read about. Yes. Is that the proposal? And yes. will that delay the rollout because you might sort of need to fit? You rather delay it and get it right. Uh, and, that's, and that's what the ministry is doing uh, to ensure we actually do the right thing. Mm -hmm. It will be handled by women and youth. Uh, we want to create uh, enterprise for them to, to actually sell them out there. And we must do it the right way. Okay. You know, our problem in our country, we want to shortcuts, uh, quick things, quick fixes. But let's ensure we do it the right way. Okay. Uh, this morning, if, if, if anyone grabs a copy of the paper, I've seen you have an expression of interest. You're looking for a consultancy firm. Yes. Uh, to help set up, I believe you want to set up an authority called the Petroleum Regulatory Authority. Yes. What would be, in a nutshell, what would be the work of this authority? To, reg to regulate the industry, uh, the products, uh, the licensing, just what DRC is doing. Okay. You know, it's being divided now. Uh, we love the energy sector and the, and the petroleum sector. And the petroleum yes. sector. So what? So you sort of take those functions away from the ERC. Yes. Divide the functions. Divide the, the functions. Yes. Give us. A, uh, specific functions to petroleum uh, matters. Okay. Yes. You've also talked about change of regulations. Why do you need to sort of review the regulations that are currently constituted? Because that's another of the tasks if, if in that expression of interest. Yeah. Uh, technically, as we move out from uh, ARC, we need actually to have regulations that are very specific to, product, to petroleum. As you also know, we are, uh, the new bill is, uh, is going to be enacted. Uh, that's an another new area. The petroleum, so bill. the petroleum bill, mm -hmm. it might come with regulations also. Uh, any law must be actually must be followed by regulations. Okay. So we have to actually look into that, and that's why we need to study so that people we, we get the right regulations. In, in a sense, yes. Do you wish that Turkana oil early oil pilot scheme had started after the petroleum bill had been passed into law, like mining, where mining now has a law, and you you now have some sort of backing to work, unlike petroleum, where we wonder what laws you use when you make a declaration in Turkana. Yes and no. Uh, the fact that this was a research project, uh, we just wanted to start <laughs> something so that we understand the dynamics of our market. But that research uh, project, yes, is costing us money it is, as taxpayers. It has costed. But I think we did not anticipate we would get into this. It's a pity we, we got into this problem. 
Okay. But uh, I think ideally we should have done it after uh, after the, the law was passed. After the law was passed, yeah, we did I not look I at think, Nigeria I think, and. I think the wisdom was we 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 test it uh, as part of our lessons, so that by the time the law comes, yes, uh, they were just rolling. Will we see a situation where in future CS yes, you are going to print agreements in the papers? We've seen that in Ghana, agreements when it comes to matters oil are very public knowledge. Uh, that, that 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 is common standards uh, that should be applied everywhere, and I think we, we should we should do that. Should one or thing will? One, uh, will. Uh, that one thing Cape Town is doing is, is actually to learn from other countries. We want to to get great capacity mm -hmm. uh, and learn from what other countries have done, and that's one thing we can learn from. We, let's be transparent in this country. Okay. Just like in mining, we have a cadastre system. We we must ensure everything is open. Okay. Do business in a very open way. It's good to do business with the government, but let's make it open. And I ask you this question, and I stay here because, yes, as a former senator, you know, you, you, you came from a place where you're calling for open transparency, ETC. Yes. But government is an interesting animal, and it's been said in the past, uh, government rarely likes to reveal what it is doing. Mm. And in fact, it's just the other day when the president now declared all tenders be made public. Yes. Uh, at least to a certain extent. So are you going to push? I'm going to push anything for that. regarding oil and mining yes. to be made transparent. Can Following you? what the president said, let's make it open. Let's make the every procurement open. Uh, let's ensure uh, every Kenyan is benefiting from this. The moment we do that, we'll see this country changing very, very fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to give you your last minute to talk a little bit about mining. Uh, mm -hmm. It's also another very important sector that could change the lives of Kenyans in addition to petroleum. Um, mining has regulations to govern the sector. And when you were being vetted, you talked about the regulations and you said some of the things you're going to do once you get into office is, and I can mention a few of them, you will push corporates that are in mining to do CSR projects. You spoke about a sovereign wealth fund. For example, in Kuala County, um, base titanium, I think there's money accruing somewhere in some account, yes. one billion. That was a figure you gave back in February. Mm -hmm. And you said, we're going to make licenses. We are told some companies have had licenses for prospecting for many years and they're sort of making yes. money from yes. that. Where are we with those promises that you made to us? First, I want to tell the, the country that uh, mining has the, the, the largest potential, even compared to what we do, we're doing in oil. The largest potential is not even oil, it's mining. And the capacity we are ha having now in this country is such a small capacity. We contribute to 0.8% of the GDP. We're estimating to get it to 10%. To do that, a lot of work, a lot of budgetary resources must be put in place to ensure every county is sensitized. And that's what we're doing with the, with the, the, with the, with the county uh, conference, mining conferences. We've done over 10. You've done over since you got over, into since office? Since I got uh, Kitui, Kuala, Samburu. We're doing, and every governor is calling me, Migori, I've gone to Migori. We organize conferences, and then we call for roundtable uh, meetings with the investors. In the mining, the African mining vision, we must support, the, the vision is about supporting the, on the extractive, is supporting the, the investor, the government, and a sustainable way of supporting the communities. Mm -hmm. On local content, on ensuring they get their rights, on ensuring, like what we are talking about now, uh, we've done so much uh, in places like Kuali. But the royalties are collected and they are stuck with uh, the Minister of uh, Treasury. So the royalties are an account somewhere? Yes. Do you have any? We, we need to get this law in place, those regulations. We need to ensure there's a fund created quickly. I've already engaged the uh, Treasury Finance to draft this law quickly. And we promise the uh, Kenyans in one month is out so that we start paying royalties to give incentives. One, one month since, the, since what? Uh, one for the last one month. Uh, okay. Yes, I give, I give that uh, proposal to oh. the Treasury okay. to fast track on that, and my teams are working with, the, with them so that we get this law and then go to Treasury now, start paying quality, start paying data everywhere. The moment Kenyans start, start taste that money from the royalties, mm -hmm. They'll be sensitized to get into mining. So yes, a lot of Kenyans are yes, looking up to you. They're, they're I waiting. mean, I'm looking at Kuala Turkana. They're looking up yes, to you. They, they, yes. they believe you are the one who's yes. holding their money. And then uh, the, the community development agreements uh, in the law mm -hmm. for large investors is 1% of the, of, of, of the gross, gro the, the gross uh, profit. Okay. Of, the, of the profit. For instance, look at uh, Kuala of Best Titanium. They did 16 billion gross. 1% of that 
even before they go into concert, uh, the local content on matters of uh, corporate social responsibility, mm -hmm. they need to pay them 160 million last year. This year is another. So are moment. you are you following up? We can't do that because we don't have uh, sort of uh, we don't have this legislation in place. I'm pushing that. I'm pushing Treasury to ensure we get this in place. We have also told governors until you get the committees in place, mm -hmm. the artisanal mining committees, the the community development agreements committees, that will now by law enforce the one percent minimum mm -hmm. on large scale investors. We can't get that money. There's money lying out there. That could benefit hungry could benefit Kenyans so right many now. People, so many people. So and that's why I look at this potential. It's a big potential. Are your hands having. tied? Yes. Tied by what these other players do. I like the Mining Act. It has so many gaps. But if we actually operationalize it, the right capacity, and I'm pushing kept up, mm -hmm. I'm pushing investors to come. Uh, we have uh, uh, by a lot of support coming. Uh, and if that budget is there to operationalize the Mining Act, and the people working and governors, and the principle we are now applying is let's devolve uh, the mining, the Mining Act. Let's ensure governors are the ones who now are the implement. ones now running the show, and ensure meeting these investors, supporting artisanal mining committees. We have 140,000 artisanal miners in the country. We want to raise 500,000. You can imagine if they are collecting gold, a gram of gold and you're raising it five times, mm. you can look at the potential we can have in this country. And you're going to change There'll lives. There'll be so much uh, uh, being got out. Well, yes, a lot on your plate. Yes. Uh, and I must say, petroleum and mining, very fascinating. I certainly yes. hope I'll have you on in the next couple of I'm months again it. to <laughs> review. Are you enjoying it? <laughs> Thank you. And the demands from people, they're yes. looking up to you, CS? Big demands. Are you doing everything that you can to ensure that both petroleum and mining... I'll try. I commit myself to this. I'll try to ensure okay. we correct this. They are watching. Thank you very much. Thank you, CS.